This video will show our students in grades 3, 4, and 5 how to use the First in Math online program. Once you log into First in Math, which you will do through our district's class link site, you will come up to the main home page of First in Math. You will see some of your focus areas that are highlighted in blue. You will have to select which focus you wish to work in. I recommend starting in elementary. When you click on the elementary focus, all of your activities and modules will appear on your new home screen. You can always change that focus by clicking on the change focus button in case you wish to move into the intermediate level. However, my suggestion would be to start out in elementary. So I'm going to model for you some of my favorite activities and modules here in First in Math. So at the very, very top in yellow, you will notice that we have our Just the Facts module. When I click on the Just the Facts, it gives me a chance to select whole numbers, fractions, or decimals. And every part works the same. So I'm going to select whole numbers. If you happen to see that you have gold stars on yours, that means you have mastered those areas and you cannot earn any more stickers for that game. So keep that in mind. If you have a gold star, you're going to want to go to other areas of first in math. But let's say I select the addition portion of just the facts. This is going to give me a pretest since it's the first time that I've used it, and I will have 300 seconds or five minutes to answer as many questions as I can. Two plus six, I'm going to type in it's the answer, which is eight, and then hit enter. Notice that the grid is going to start to fill up as I answer the questions. The clock is also working backwards from those 300 seconds. Notice still also that all of my correct answers are filling the grid in blue. Now let's pretend I get an answer incorrect. 2 plus 5 equals 7. Let's pretend I put in the number 6. Notice that any incorrect answer appears in purple. That way I know what facts I need to practice. All right, I'm going to take us back to the main page and continue to go around to our next module, which is the very important facts. The very important facts encourages practice over and over again so that you can become better at the basic facts. Notice that you can choose addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So I'm going to start with multiplication here, just to model for you. And at the very, very bottom, you're going to see some blue circles, some red circles, and some red circles with stars. So let me explain to you what they all mean. When you see a blue star, the blue star or the blue circle means that it is an instructional video. You're going to learn a certain way to multiply. When you see a red circle, you are going to play a game based on what you just learned. And when you see a circle with a star, those are checkpoint activities, activities that are going to really see how much you've learned so far. So let's go ahead and see what our first video is in multiplication. The zero rule and the one rule. Hi, Rachel again. Nice to have you back as we continue this incredible journey where you will first learn to multiply and then divide, even with double digits. Here are the three rules that will help us uncover the 36 very important facts for multiplication. The zero rule, one rule, and mirror rule. Let's start with the zero rule. A number multiplied by zero equals zero. This is the zero property of multiplication. For example, zero times five equals zero. Nine times zero equals zero. Zero times two equals zero. Next, let's look at the one rule. 
a number multiplied by one stays the same. This is known as the identity property of multiplication. For example, seven times one stays a seven. One times eight equals eight. Four times one equals four. Let's practice the zero and one rule by playing a game. So, now that I have finished watching that short video, I am going to play a game to see if I've learned those rules. So when I hit start, you'll notice that a multiplication problem appears on top and all the answers appear in big white circles and they're all mixed up. I have to match it so that it's correct. One times six, well, we learned that anything times one equals the other number. So one times six equals six. I want to search for that six. Oh, here it is. And I'm going to drag it so that it matches the problem. Oh, that time I had two correct. One times nine equals nine. Here's the nine. Five times zero, anything times zero equals zero. Oh, I made two pairs with one move there. Now let's pretend I get it wrong. Eight times zero. Oh, that equals four. Oh, notice that I had a start over again. So this is an activity that really wants to make sure that you understand how to multiply and as you learn these different rules. Remember too that every time you are answering questions correctly, you are earning some stickers. And those sticker counts are going to become important as you continue to play first in math. So let me continue to move along. We also have our practice gyms. Our practice gyms are also broken up into whole numbers, fractions, and decimals. Oh, let's try addition this time. I can add one to a number. I can add two, three, four. I get to choose what I want. You'll notice there's lots of gold stars here because that means that this student has mastered all of these facts of addition and they cannot earn any more stickers for these areas. Stickers equal points that you earn as you compete for player of the day and team of the week in first in math. So let's say I want to add 10 to a number. 9 plus 10 or 10 plus 10? Which wheel? equals 19. And I'm going to click on the wheel. I've earned a sticker just by getting that question right. 4 plus 10 or 3 plus 10? 3 plus 10 equals 13. Again, my strength meter is getting bigger because I'm in the gym. I'm getting stronger. 12 plus 10 or 10 plus 10? Which one equals 22? 5 plus 10 or 4 plus 10? Which one equals 15? Let's pretend I get it wrong and see what happens to the strength meter. 4 plus 10 or 2 plus 10? 4 plus 10 is 14. 2 plus 10 is 12. I should hit this one, but let's pretend I get it wrong. Mm. Notice that I lose my strength, but I've earned any points that I may have accumulated prior to that. So the practice gyms are a great way for you to get stronger with mathematics. Our next module are the skill sets. Now the skill sets start from skill set two, three, four, and five, and you can jump to any skill set that you want. They are all available to you. So let's say I just want to start in skill set for game one. Now this time you're going to notice that I can use addition and subtraction because they are lit up. And now what equals 5? 10 plus 5, 10 minus 5. 9 plus 2, 9 minus 2. Well, 10 minus 5 <coughs> equals 5. How can I make 10 using addition and subtraction? 1 plus 9. 
How can I make 6? 11 minus 5. Notice that I'm filling in all of these shapes down here because the more questions that I get right, I'm earning some stickers. Okay? All right. Now, you may see up here that it says no stickers are earned, and that's because I'm in a preview mode. All right. So as I continue along in our modules, we also have something called the know and show. So the know and show has different number stories that you can go ahead and try to solve. So because these are number stories or word problems, if I have a hard time reading, I can click this little speaker. It will read it to me. Let's try it out. Megan has cookies for a bake sale. Maria brings her 42 more. Now they have 88 cookies. How many cookies did Megan start with? Well, that's like a start, change, and diagram. Hmm, I wonder how many Megan started with. Well, once I know the answer, I'm going to click on the correct shape. Well, 46 plus 42 equals 88. That's it. So I've earned two points because I want to make my way to becoming player of the day. And then another little number story will come out with answers also. And that is how the know and show will work. As I continue around, I have some bonus games. The more points that I earn, the more bonus games will appear. And that's pretty cool because you can really practice some more mathematics as you continue to play first in math. When I continue along with some of the modules, I also have a measurement world. That measurement world will involve some measuring and money and time and weight. So there's a lot of activities that exist there also. And finally, we have what's called computational thinking. And in this module, we're involving some logic and some coding problems. So I invite you to also check out the many different games and activities that exist in that module. Now, there are many other features with First in Math. Remember that I said that every time you play a game, you're earning some stickers. At the bottom of your homepage, your sticker total will exist. Your team name will also exist because every player is a part of a team, whether you're playing at home or in school. Each class makes up a team. Every week, the team of the week is announced, and that team of the week receives a huge acknowledgement. But every day, our player of the day is acknowledged. The player of the day is the student that earns the most stickers the day before. They become our POTD. Also on your home page, you'll notice that you have the top five players in your class because it's keeping score to see how well everybody is doing. You'll also notice that you have a family link. As soon as you start playing first in math, you also get a family link so that somebody in your family can also enjoy First in Math. You can go ahead and create your own family link user ID and have mom, dad, or a brother or sister play along with you. Another neat feature of First in Math is the goals index that appears on your home page. When I click on my goals index, I want to make sure that I am in the focus mode that I've been working in. So for this case, I've been working in the elementary focus mode. My circle here is broken up into four quadrants. These numbers that appear on the outside add up to equal the middle number. The largest score I can get is a 100 because each quadrant is worth 25 points. Now my top quadrant is my sticker count. And you'll notice that as I scroll down, it will keep track of how many stickers I earn. As soon as I hit 2,500 stickers, I've hit my 25 points. Now, 
when I go and hit the second quadrant, which is in purple, that's my fact fluency. There are all of my fluency gems. So you can scroll down to your purple section to see how well you are doing there. Well, at the very bottom, I have my procedural fluency. This is where I'm looking to work in my skill sets. And then when I scroll down to find my skill sets, you'll notice that not every area is filled in. So I can click on these areas and it will take me right to some activities where I can earn more stickers. And the final quadrant, that's our word problem fluency. And that's where we would find our know and show word problems. So again, if it's not shaded in green, I can go ahead and click on that area and it will take me right to those activities where I can go ahead and earn some stickers in hopes of becoming the player of the day. Another tab that I have on my homepage is the Achievements tab. The Achievements tab keeps track of how many stickers that I've earned in a day, how many stickers I've earned in a week, and how many weeks I've been in the winner circle in my class. It also keeps track of what level I have reached in first in math. I could become, when I earn 1,000 stickers or 2,000 stickers or 3,000 stickers, I earn different badges. And I have many different skill levels. I can begin with as a rookie and then they become a student, and a scholar, and a whiz, and an ace, and an expert, and a mathematician, a genius, a mastermind, a champion. And when I reach 10,000 stickers, I can become a grand champion, and you will become a member of our school's First in Math Wall of Fame, an achievement that is to be proud of. Now, one last feature that you have in First in Math. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice you have an envelope. Well, this envelope is a way for your teacher to communicate with you, for you to communicate with your teacher, and also for you to receive some badges. So here, this student has earned some badges. He has earned a badge for reaching 1,500 stickers. He earned another badge for reaching 2,000 stickers. 3,000 stickers, 4,000 stickers, 5,500 stickers. When he has seen the message and he hits got it, then that message will go ahead and disappear. A teacher can also send you messages asking you to work on certain modules in First and Math. And if you had wanted to send a message to your teacher, all you would need to do is click on the Message Your Teacher button, go ahead and type it in and hit Send, and your teacher will receive your note about first in math. All right, my third, fourth, and fifth grade mathematicians, it's your turn to go ahead and begin to play first in math. Earn as many stickers as you can, and hopefully you can earn 10,000 stickers to be inducted into our first in math wall of fame. Good luck!